And we've got Doug Brinkley with us. Uh, Doug has compiled uh, quite a marvelous document outlining the history of number four SFTS at uh, Geraldton. It's just been released uh, and he's interested in showing it off today. Uh, Doug comes from Northampton. Uh, in his youth he saw aeroplanes flying over his property or their property and uh, developed a love of aviation which has not gone away. He spent his annual holidays in Perth two weeks at a time learning how to fly at Mayland's aerodrome and uh, the love has gone on. So, Doug Brinkley. I'll just hold it up. That's the book and uh, it took quite a while to uh, come together. Um, Aviators, old aviators, uh, seem to like to uh, either build their own plane or, or write a book. That was my effort. I did not do any flying at Jordan at all during World War II. I was at school at the uh, Christian Brothers College, which is now called Nagel. Um, we saw airplanes every day from 41 up until uh, early 42 when we were shut about the Tartan. That's an agricultural school uh, south east of Mullawar. We were there a couple of weeks and the uh, Air Force took over Clondalf in, uh, in Perth to do their initial training for any pilots. Um, the kids that were there got shot about to Tarden. They talk about a bunch of rebels. Gee, you'd see nothing you to see them. <laughs> but it was a reform school at the time, I believe. Um, the, um, we were there in 41 when the Catalinas arrived to uh, search for Sydney. Uh, a fair bit of activity coming and going with aircraft. Um, there's an intelligence report on the flying search in the book. And the book is constructed around the operations record book. Uh, I obtained a copy of that from the um, a rep, uh, historical section in Canberra. It was on a tape. I had to get it uh, copied onto um, uh, sheets so that we could get it typed out. And I had a, a less. Um, to type it exactly as it was. And she did a tremendous job. She had just finished a course at TAFE at uh, Whitford's. And I was amazed when I went through and edited it, making it short, but exactly. And uh, believe me, she didn't leave, leave, lose much. The, um, when, I said, when I asked her to do it, exactly as it was, all the unusual hyphenations, spelling, and uh, punctuation. And she did it. <laughs> It was really a tremendous effort on her part. The, um, there's a photograph of each course, uh, starting from number 8 to 49. Uh, 49, uh, the rap in their wisdom beside the court, changed it to court 50. Uh, they had about three hours to go before they got their wings, but they shunted them over to Malawar and they completed their wings course over there. The, um, there's 350 photographs in the book on about 480 pages. There's a lot of other activities, all the prangs, uh, except the one that went into the water at uh, Drummond's Cave. That's just north of Jordan. It was a gypsy moth, and um, apparently they, they fished the guys out and the, uh, and the aircraft out, and they got severely reprimanded for damaging His Majesty's aircraft. Um, it's, um, when you look at the names on the, the um, courses, um, most of them I was able to obtain names for, uh, particularly ones that had their mug shots, which they put onto a sheet and photographed the course that way. The ones that I couldn't get, um, uh, which were quite often their, in their um, uh, blues or whatever they could not have blues, their uh, overalls, um, most of the guys were able to remember them and came up with names. The most interesting one was uh, eight course, which was the first, uh, Charlie Yugo gave me a photograph and I said, Charlie, there's no names. And he said, that's me. I said, what about the rest of them? So I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, he eventually found a, a chappy in two chaps in South Australia. And um, I sent it over to them and uh, about well, six to 12 months later, back came an enlargement uh, with each guy marked out and a name attached. And I thought that was a tremendous job. The, um, in, in, throughout the book, there's uh, stories of um, the guys passed on to me, so it gives you a bit of a feeling for what they did leading up to the joining up. 
and uh, I didn't go uh, much beyond uh, where they uh, finished their course because I, I could see that uh, I could have it up more than 480 pages, no trouble. Bluey Truscott, uh, a bit of an article about Bluey because the um, uh, base sent up a, an answer to bring his body back from uh, Exmouth or Potshot. Uh, a bit of information about the um, in early 42 when they started, people started coming down from Java and uh, Dutch East Indies. Um, and the Americans uh, making their way down from the Philippines, just gradually moving down through um, into Surabaya and then around the Chile Pat and then down and trying to uh, dodge all the Japanese that were picking every, every shipping off that was coming from Java. A um, couple of interesting ones, the uh, cruise of the Lanakai, which I extracted some uh, information on, on that. That was the schooner. And what, uh, made me interested, I couldn't think what the Yanks would do with a schooner. Generally they think uh, the bigger boat the better. But uh, that's an interesting story in itself. Uh, I won't elaborate any further, you can buy a book. <laughs> They're available. Um, oh, I don't think I can say too much more. Another interesting thing was, after World War II, uh, I was from Smindor, which uh, was just um, Western Mullawar, we had a farm between uh, Tanindawar and Una, which is going towards Northampton. Tanindawar was in the National Geographic map that came out after World War II. And it often fascinated me uh, why they picked Tanindawar. Well, the um, uh, Four Service Flying Train School had a, a, a landing field just south of the uh, rail siding, and uh, quite a few uh, pilots couldn't find it. I don't know why, they had a good size uh, grain bin there. But I um, uh, asked quite a few and said, oh, honey, to need a wall. <laughs> Never found that. Um, the instructors used to fly up from Jordan near the Tiger Moth and uh, wait there and see who was coming uh, on their cross countries and made sure they checked in. Uh, one uh, couple of prangs there. Um, one ended up uh, hitting a tree and ended up on a creek bank. Uh, another one um, clipped a tree, but he made it back to Jordan. The other interesting one was uh, Ewan Station, that's uh, north of Mullawar, um, uh, in 40, 42 when they created uh, two reserve squadrons, 68 and 69. Um, they were to do surveillance up on the other coast and wherever. Um, a couple of chaps went out to Ewan Station, and that was another one that they fly in and fly out of. Uh, and there'd been a, a cyclone through, and a, the strip was pretty muddy and the uh, Anson couldn't get off so he ended up in the Grand River. They eventually fished him out, uh, the aircraft out, nobody was injured. And um, Michael Folks Taylor, I think people probably know Michael, uh, he often complained about the condition of the road that the rat lifted him as they brought the Anson out. He said the rats were there for years after <laughs> um, I don't think much more I can say, Brian.